What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Geek Pantheon. I am Eric, and today I wanted to, this might be a turn into a series, I don't know, but I wanted to look at some of the big players in the tabletop role-playing game scene in terms of dungeon masters, game masters, players, etc., and look at what lessons we can learn from them. There's no better place to start than... But first, a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh, but more from them later on in the video. So Matt Mercer, at one point in time, was arguably the most divisive person in the tabletop role-playing game space because of the alleged Matt Mercer effect of creating unfair expectations for DMs and GMs all over the world that had new people coming to their tables who had watched Critical Role and were expecting the same level of an experience for their personal game. I have not seen that sentiment continue in any kind of earnestness. I feel like the people that didn't like Matt's style of play and those expectations just stopped talking about it, which, cool. I thought that it was overblown, honestly, the whole discourse around it, but I never had anybody at my table tell me that I should be more like Matt Mercer, thankfully. But I do think that there are some valuable lessons that we can look at the way Matt runs, manages, and crafts his game for all of our games that don't require us to DM is a full-time job like Matt is able to do. Obviously, there are a ton of things I could talk about, whether or not it's the NPCs that he creates, the world that he's built, all these kind of things. But there's one specific axis that I really want to focus in on that I feel is part of the secret sauce of what makes Matt's game so special and why his players get so invested in the stories he collaboratively tells with them. I spent some time while I was writing up the script of this video thinking how I could summarize it in a easy to throw out way in the intro. And the best I could come up with is you should care about your player's characters. The rules should not. Now, what do I mean by that? So obviously Matt spends a lot of time crafting foils and obstacles and hurdles for his player's characters for them to overcome. And a lot of the NPCs are hyper-focused on the player characters and the stories that they are attempting to tell. The world is built and the campaign is built in a way to allow his players' characters to shine. This is what I mean by, you should care about your players' characters, and you should. But what I mean about the rules should not is when the roles go wrong or something bad happens as a result of the players' characters' interactions with the rules and mechanics of the game, Mac takes his hands off the wheel. He lets the game drive. He lets the player characters respond. He doesn't attempt to bend the rules or fall over himself trying to save player characters from the consequences of their own actions. So let's break down the first half of what I'm discussing with the way that Matt Mercer runs and manages his game. So I feel like I, I don't know Matt personally. I've never seen behind his screen. So I'm speculating largely on this based on what I've seen of Critical Role and the way I've seen him speak about the game of D and how he interacts with it. But it seems to me that first and foremost, Matt knows his players' characters extremely well. I'm not just talking about backstories. I'm talking about abilities, class features, racial abilities, etc. Rarely do you see Matt ask for clarification from one of his players about something their character can do. Matt is aware of all of that which allows him to, even in the moment when he's improvising, create credible threats for his player characters or create threats that he knows the player characters will be able to shine against. When we're thinking about things like this, if you have a player character who has immunity to fire for some reason, depending on what system you're in, what class features they have, let's say they are immune to fire and you throw a fire elemental at them thinking it's going to be a big threat and it's going to be this big epic moment. And instead, you forgot that your player character is immune to fire. And so that player thinks that this is like a moment for them to shine, but you haven't. You're not on the same page is what I'm trying to say. Whereas it seems like when Matt throws a fire elemental at that player character, he is aware that they are immune to fire. And he is going to do what he can to allow that to mean something in the context of the encounter. Just like when he's creating elements of his world, he knows the player character's motivations, their backstories, the factions they've interacted with, etc. 
so that when he's creating them, he can create them in such a way to where the spotlight is constantly thrown back onto the players and their characters. This allows all of his players to get extremely invested in the story and the world and their own characters and each other's characters and the interpersonal relationships that come with that. And that is one of his biggest boons as a dungeon master is he cares about his players' characters deeply. But then we look at some of the darker moments of the three campaigns that Critical Role has had and largely they are a result of the rules. They're a result of the mechanics of the game coming in conflict with the players and the players not coming out on top. And they've created some of the most dramatic, impactful, earnest, and long lasting elements of the game. Think about how different campaign one of Critical Role would have been if Vex hadn't had that unfortunate interaction with the trap forcing Vax to make a deal, and the rest is history for that campaign. If Matt had felt compelled seeing that there was an instant death, campaign one is so old, I'm not worried about spoilers. If Matt was so concerned about the fact that one of his players' characters was about to die from a trap that just came out of nowhere and pulled that punch, how much poorer would campaign one have been for that. But before we continue, huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. I don't know about you all, but it is the start of a new year. We're still pretty early on. And with that comes resolutions or a desire to do better than the year before. And the two most common ones that I hear from other people and that I say to myself is be healthier and spend less money. HelloFresh makes it super easy by sending you pre-packaged ingredients that are portioned out for you with recipes alongside it. You can cook at home, cook healthier, and spend less money at the grocery store since you're not buying anything extra and stuff doesn't go to waste since you're getting exactly what you need. But the thing that causes most people to fall off the wagon in that regard is repetitiveness. You can only have chicken breast and rice so many times, which is another great thing about HelloFresh. With over 35 new recipes every single week, variety will not be an issue and you can pick things exactly as you like them, even if you have dietary restrictions such as you're vegetarian or you avoid dairy. They've got you taken care of. Try HelloFresh. Just click the link down in the description below for a limited time discount and free shipping to try HelloFresh today. So how do we take these elements of Matt Mercer's game and make them actionable on our end as fellow GMs and DMs? So these are the action items that you can take away from watching Matt Mercer's game in the specific context in which I'm speaking. So first and foremost is become familiar with their player's character's abilities. And I'm not saying that you have to have them memorized, but at least the big points, maybe you don't need to know exactly how many die worth of sneak attack damage the rogue has at that moment, but you know that they have that. Certain characters have immunities or vulnerabilities or resistances to certain things, which characters need to sleep and which don't. I know that seems like a lot of information, especially if you have a larger table. I have eight players at my table, so... I get it, but especially if you're early on in your game where they're all low level, that's not that much to keep in mind. And if it's helpful, you have a DM screen, slap that stuff on the backside of your screen so you, that you have a refresher. Additionally, be aware of the stories that your players' characters have been through, their backstories and everything they've been through up to that point in your campaign. Keep notes, refresh yourself on the session notes, what has come before what has happened in the campaign. And then this is something that I have tried to get better about doing. I'm not perfect at it yet, but I have to believe that Matt at least has conversations in the same vein with his players. If not, if I ever find out that's not true, I will more than happily take that L. But I think it is true. Talk to your players about the kind of stories that they want to tell with their character. Have that conversation away from the table whether that's through DMs or face-to-face, -face, whatever you want to do. But know where they see their character going so that you can be on the same page that, that when you're creating the campaign and creating those arcs, you can tee them up and set them up to succeed because that's the only way that you can get those really, truly special moments with your players and their characters as the fellow storyteller at the table is if you're on the same page as them and you can set them up to have those epic moments that they're looking forward to as a player. And on the other side of things, get out of the way of the rules. This is something that I struggle with constantly. When something bad is about to happen to my players' characters, I constantly feel like I messed up somewhere. 
I think, oh, I didn't balance this encounter correctly, or I didn't telegraph that this trap was going to be there well enough, or I designed the dungeon poorly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas sometimes it's, it's the player character's fault. They didn't check for traps thoroughly. They could have done X in this encounter to make it super easy, but they instead did Y. Sometimes it's not your fault as a DM. Sometimes it's not my fault. I didn't mess anything up. And so I need to allow the players and their characters to live with the consequences of their actions, even if that means they don't live for very much longer. And by doing this, you will introduce earnest and honest stakes to your game so that when the player characters are making these decisions as their characters, they mean something. They know that you're not going to have a deus ex machina moment that saves them from the jaws of defeat. They will have to live with their defeats so that they can then celebrate their successes. And I think if you do that, you will take one step closer to having players who are as invested in your game as Matt's players are invested in his. Or maybe not. Those are just my thoughts. But if you'd like some more general tips on being a good DM, check out the video right there.